Right. I'm going to go look in the puddle. At least it's another mirror. What new thing is this? Okay, she's looking at me all over, but not adoring me at all. It's not an azor, and even less of an aglay. I do, however, think she's making comparisons. I don't quite know what to make of that as a look. Can't say what it lacks exactly. There's something insipid about her. She's the sort of thing I do not like the look of. Has she any conversation? Let's see. Are you a person? Most definitely. I am my own person. Really? And have you nothing to say to me? Uh, no. Ordinarily, I'm the one who gets spoken about. I'm the one who gets told how lovely she is. <laughs> More likely than to be the one to start a conversation. But you are charmed. Charmed? By you? No, I'm the one charms people. So you're not pleased to see me? Uh, sadly, neither pleased nor peeped. Should I be? What an extraordinary thing. You stare at me, I let you, and yet you feel nothing. You must have been distracted. Closer attention while you study me. There. I There. There. How do you find me? Uh, what's all this you about you, you, you? Uh, the loveliest present must wait until she's noticed and they're struck. So be struck. You're still not listening, are you? I said the loveliest present must wait, as one said. As one replies, she is waiting. Well, if it isn't me, then where is she? All three other people in the entire world are struck dumb by me. I don't know these people of yours, but I do know there are three who are rocked because of me and think I am wonderful. Wonderful? <laughs> you may be passable and even quite pleasant. <clears throat> I'm being polite now, unlike you. I'd love to shove her politeness right down her throat. But to imagine any comparison between yourself and myself would be madness, as one can see. One can see, and one is finding one quite ugly. In which case, it's your jealousy is blinding you to my beauty. No, it's your face that's blinding me. My face. I'm not upset, you know. I have seen it. <laughs> you ask the water in any puddle what it's like. You ask Mesrin, he's mad about me. The water in the puddle, which is having you on, if asked, would tell me that I am the fairest. And I don't know this Mesrin, but if he saw me, he wouldn't even look at you. And I have an Azor, an Azor worth ten times him, an Azor I love. He's almost as pretty as me. And he says, I'm his life. You, you're not anybody's life. And I also have a mirror, a mirror which has confirmed everything my Azor and the puddle have told me. So, beat that! <laughs> well, you also got a mirror, do you? And what do you use that for? Admiring yourself, I suppose? She's the sort of thing I do not like. <laughs> Here. I knew I wouldn't like her. Take a look in this one. Ah. Learn to recognize yourself and to shut up. Mm. Take but a glance in this one. Realize your true mediocrity and the modesty appropriate in my presence. <laughs> Go away. Since you refuse to take pleasure in the sight of me, you are of no further use to me. And I'm not speaking with you anymore. And I don't even know you're there. She's mad. She's seeing things. 
What world is she from? So, what are you two doing so far apart and not speaking? It's another person whom I met by accident and whom my beauty has driven to distraction. Hmm. What do you make of this faded thing? This ridiculous specimen who aspires to striking me, who asks me, hey, what do you think of me? Hey, how do you feel when you look at me? She expects me to take pleasure in the sight of her, and she thinks she's as beautiful as I am. I didn't say that. I said more beautiful as one can see in the mirror. Uh, well, take a look at this one. Oh! I only asked that she glance in this one, which is the more accurate. Uh, oh, gently. No need to get carried away. Let's treat the accident of your meeting as a happy one instead. Let's all be together. You make friends. And you can add the joy of being together to the pleasure of both being adored. Egle by the lovely Azor, who she loves, and Adine by the lovely Mesrin, who she loves. Now, come on, make it up. Ew. Only if she ditches her tedious delusions of grandeur. Listen, I know what'll knock some sense into her. I'll just have to take her ass sore off of her. Not that I want him or anything, but anything for a quiet life. Okay. If I s meet this mesrin idiot of hers, she's had it. Okay, goodbye. I'm taking myself off now. I just can't bear her. Present company being too unbearably distinguished. <laughs> what a nasty face. <laughs> oh, sticks and stones. Oh, oh, let her say what she likes. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, really, absolutely. I feel sorry for her. But you have to leave. It's time for your music lesson, and I shan't be able to give it to you if you loiter. Wait! I think I see Mesrin. Just a quick word. We've only just left him. I shan't be long. Mesrin! What? It's you. It's my Adine. You've come back. Oh. Mesrin. Oh. Dean, oh, I'm so happy. I was getting so impatient. Look, no, don't be too happy. I haven't come back. I'm only just going. I, I, I just happen to be here. So now you'll have to just happen to be with me. Oh, listen, oh, listen. Listen what happened to me. Hey, keep it short. I've got other things to do. I am. I'm beautiful, aren't I? Beautiful. Are you beautiful? Well, see, no hesitation. Speaks as he finds. Are you divine? Beauty incarnate? Well, yes, of course I am. But you, Curtis and me, we've got it all wrong. I'm ugly. My Adine? No less. After I left you, I found a new person, female from another world, who instead of being amazed by me, of being transported like you are and like she should have been, who instead insisted that I be charmed by her. And when I failed to comply, she accused me of being ugly. You're going to make me lose my temper. She informed me that you'd leave me once you'd seen her. That was because she was angry. But this is a person? Oh, so she says, and she looks like one, more or less. Oh, she is one. She'll doubtless be back. And I absolutely insist that you treat her with contempt. When you see her, I want you to be appalled. Oh, she must be really hideous. Yes, yes, she's called, um, she's called, uh, Egley. That's right. It's an ugly. 
She's currently sporting an angry face, sullen, not as different as Carissa's, but a visage not as lovely as mine either. It's a face that would be, we'd be hard pressed to describe. But it's not a nice face. Oh no, not at all nice. More sort of dull. Dull. Oh, dull. Yeah. She's got eyes. Well, how do I put this? She's got eyes that don't look lovely, really. They just sort of look. Look. And she's got a mouth. It's not big or small, and it's a mouth made for talking. Talking. <laughs> talking, yes. And and she's, well, her figure would be a little bit like mine if she were a better shape. And, and shape. she's got hands that come and go, and long, thin fingers, and a nasty, rude voice. You are bound to recognize her. Oh, I can just see her. Don't you worry. Just leave her to me. She wants sending back to this another world after I've really mortified her. Really finished her. Really humiliated her. <laughs> Had a really good laugh at her. <laughs> Don't you worry. Just let me have this hand. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Oh, oh. Right, let's go. Now, when he's finished kissing my hand. That's red. That's enough. I'm late. I'm late. Oh. Goodbye, my only love. I shan't be long. Dream of vengeance. Goodbye, my only reason for living.